Hello YouTube, i uh, got a new backpack, going to show you that and everything. It's brand new so I'm just going to show you what it looks like and then I'll do a, a review after I've been out with it. Yeah, I'm quite uh, interested in it, it's quite an unusual backpack for the UK um, and there's not many reviews on YouTube around the world so I just sort of do one of those and then I've got some other bits and pieces to show you first so I'll go through that. Um, it's been a little while since I've done a video. We've had loads of stuff going on in the house. We've got a brand new uh, room just for sewing and creating and stuff like that. Uh, so I can make a lot more gear and my wife can make all her uh, stuff as well. And uh, we've got new bedrooms for the boys. So they're all sorted out now. They've got their own rooms now. Um, so yeah, it's just been a manic new year. Um, but yeah, things have been going well. I've been doing a lot of stuff. So I've started to import um, a lot of products and fabrics. So this is one of them. This is uh, some new material I'm using uh, from America. And it's manufactured in America and it's fabric that's designed specifically for hammocks and nothing else. Although you can use it for other stuff. Um, this is called Hexon 1.0. So it's a one ounce, uh, super lightweight fabric. It's very strong. Once you've made a hammock out of it, it can take a weight of up to uh, 18 stone. So it's, it's very strong. And it's an unusual weave. So I'll put up a picture of the weave so you can see it. It's a, a grid stop pattern, like uh, nylon, but then it's got a, a diamond rip stop uh, in the weave as well. So it's got a full, <sighs> eight direction rip stop on it um, so it makes it very strong there's very little stretch you can see almost no stretch in both the directions and then on the diagonal there's a bit of stretch but not it goes so far and then stops so it's um, got good resistance perfect properties for a hammock it's uncalendered which means uh, when it's manufactured sometimes they put it through hot rollers and you get a smooth surface and that's for downproof of fabric, but it also stops it breathing a little bit. So this is uncalendered, so it breathes perfectly, so you get no condensation and things like that. And it's just like floaty fabric. It's like brilliant stuff. Uh, it's quite expensive. Uh, this is an olive green. They do a few different colors. And I'm making hammocks out of this. I've made one already, um, uh, which is a little bit different. So I think it's a, the only hammock in the UK made like this. It's top of the range, all the best products sourced from around the world. Um, no compromises on uh, cost or uh, quality. Everything's double stitch. It's got quad stitching down the uh, uh, end channels. Um, it's got four folds in the end channels, so it's super strong. It's got knotty mods down the sides, so you can have foot boxes and head boxes uh, done in a very, uh, unusual way so you don't have any holes in the fabric and things like that um, it's just the top of the range hammock and the hammock whoopee slings ridge line beaners and uh, the tree huggers all in a, a bishop bag weighs 400 grams which is very good for a complete tree to tree hammock system um, I'm also making some bug nettings to go with it. They're half bug nettings, also very light. No seam imported from the States as well. So these hammocks, I'm going to sell a few of them. I'm not going to sell many because um, they're quite a lot of work, but I'm going to sell a few of them. I sold one already uh, to a friend of mine and uh, he's done a little review. Uh, if you want to go and check him out, I'll put the link below. And he's just starting up a YouTube channel. Um, he's also an excellent, excellent knife maker in the UK and he's teamed up with a UK forge specialising in the metal. Um, he does great leather work, great finishing of knives, uh, scales and handles etc. So check him out, keep an eye on his YouTube channel, there's going to be some amazing stuff on there. So have a look below, uh, subscribe to him and then you'll see, uh, see some of the stuff that he does, awesome guy. But yeah, so new hammocks in the UK, probably the lightest in the UK. Uh, that takes up to a weight of um, 18 stone and is 11 foot long. It's a proper full-sized hammock for the most comfortable uh, hammock sleep you'll, you'll ever have. So yeah, really chuffed with that. They've turned out really well, really enjoying that. Something else I'm playing with at the moment is uh, Amsteel. 
a lot of you hammock guys know this already, uh, but if you don't, there's um, a Dyneema cord from the Samson company, and they make this Amsteel. This is 7 sixteenths, 7 sixty-fourths, I don't know. It's the thinner version of the Amsteel. Um, and you can get it in different colors, because I import this from the States as well. So there's a gray, there's a black, uh, there's red, there's yellow, there's some other colors. Um, it's just crazy strong stuff. It, you can put all your weight on that, no problem. Use it for hammocking. I make whoopee slings out of this. Um, these are the things to attach your hammock to your tree huggers. Uh, they're nacro beaners. So you can see it's uh, spliced um, steel uh, with a special knot on the end. Just goes over, does up and it's double strength and you can hang your full weight off of that no problem at all and it's much lighter than a carabiner so I'm, I'm using these on all my stuff it's, they're just brilliant super lightweight super strong why not so I'm really into the splicing and the berry and the uh, uh, the different techniques to manipulate Amsteel into the things that you want so yeah doing a lot of work with Amsteel at the moment something else that I've just done I'll come a bit closer um, I've made a lot of stoves in the past for people, not as a business to make money necessarily, but just to um, to make sure people get access to this stuff in the UK for a reasonable price without all the import duties and all the, the fuss that, that comes with that. So um, I make these, as you know, these are cat boil stoves. Uh, for 2016, this is now the cat boil 2. I don't make the cat boil 1 anymore. Um, they're fine, the cat ball ones, they'll last for years, they're perfect. They're 46 grams. The cat ball two is the same thing, but this is now 25 grams, uh, much, much lighter. And I'm using, you'll see in another video that I've got, I'm using the new ceramic wool wick, which is awesome. It doesn't burn, it doesn't char, it looks exactly like it does on the first day you get it. Um, for years, so it doesn't shrink, it doesn't cause any issues with the temperatures of these stoves. So now these are um, 25 grams, um, super lightweight, super strong, it's got the steel inner steel for the heavy pots, uh, works in all temperatures and it comes in a little stuff bag. You get a little measuring pot um, and you also get an information sheet about it, how to use it. You have to use a windshield with these don't use these alcohol stoves without a windshield, they're just wasting fuel. Um, but with 20 millilitres of fuel, you can do all your cooking for the night and uh, have a couple of drinks out of that as well. So uh, yeah, these are perfect. It comes in a little stuff sack as well. So these, if you're interested, these are about £12 UK. I have shipped a few internationally, but I'm mainly doing it for UK. Um, and they're just, they're just great. So I've got a few of these. I'm not going to make loads. Uh, I think I've got about four left out of the last batch I made um, so if you're interested in one of those just give me a shout on YouTube and if I've got one left you, you can have it so that's the stones right now uh, backpacks I didn't think I'll end up I'd end up where I am today from where I started I started in deep woodland with 120 litre army Bergen um, bushcrafting and all that and right now where I'm at is ultra lightweight minimal kit long hikes vistas views scenery uh, mountains and coastline so completely different to where I used to be I'm still going to do woodland camps and I'll probably do one on my next trip um, but again ultra lightweight so British Army Bergen 120 litre brilliant bit of kit I had one, I sold it now. Um, the reason being 120 litres for me was far too big. I would n never fill it, um, so huge. The comfort of it is not great. It's not designed for ultra lightweight, long backpacking trips. Um, so it's not very comfortable on the hips. It doesn't transfer the load to the hips, it's more on the shoulders. Um, if you've got any issues with your back, then they're not great at all. The lumbar support's very poor, there's no adjustment and things like that. British Army Bergens, they last forever, built like a tank, uh, fit everything you'll ever need in there. But for me, too heavy, way, way too heavy. You can get bags a quarter of that weight now, which is just as good. 
um, and uh, just not comfortable for the, the long hike. So from the British Army Bergen, I went to a, a high gear Tibet, which is um, more of a hiker's backpack. You can get it in Go Outdoors in the UK. It's about 40 pounds, so it's really cheap for a backpack. It's got all the adjustments you need. Uh, it was uh, 65 litres size, which was a lot better for me. Even that was a bit too big. Um, quite weighty, two kilograms, something like that, I think. Uh, I'll have to look it up. But yeah, pretty weighty. Um, already I had some issues with the internal fabric. I had a delta peg and the point of the delta peg ripped through some of the internal fabric, so it wasn't that strong. Uh, it's okay, it's, it's a fine backpack. Um, I'll keep that one and I'll still use it, it's all right. Um, if I'm going through some really rough terrain, I'll probably use it because I don't mind it if it gets trashed. Um, so that's where I ended up and that's where I have been for a long while. Now, there is a range of ultralight backpacks. Now, there's a whole range of them. There's two main groups. There's ultralight no frame and there's ultralight framed. And there's some that are kind of in the middle. Now, unframed backpacks, there's definitely a weight limit to what you can carry. After that, it's just not comfortable, not practical. And that weight limit is quite low. I think it's about 12 kilograms, 15 kilograms. You can, some you can go more, etc. Um, so without a frame, not comfortable enough for me. So they're out the window. Now, ultralight frame backpacks come in all range and sizes from big manufacturers to uh, single people making them on their own. I did think about making a backpack myself, designed it all, priced it all up, and the price was pretty high to import all the, the fabrics that I wanted. And it would be a first generation backpack, there'd be loads of adjustments to do, probably need to make another one, etc., to make it any good. So the cost was not looking attractive. And so I started looking around, I decided to buy one. Uh, I've got a spreadsheet that I did, an analysis on all of the ultralight backpacks I could find that were any good, not the rubbish ones, because there is some rubbish ones. And I stuck it in a spreadsheet, so I'll put that link down below. If you look in there, you can see all the range. And if you want to have a look yourself at price and weight and things like that, then it's all there, all the statistics. Um, and I ended up with a couple that I really liked. One was the ULA Ohm 2. I'm sure you've seen Shug's channel. Uh, if you haven't, check out Shug's channel, it's amazing. Shug's channel is mainly for hammocking. Um, and he uses the ULA Ohm 1 and Ohm 2. And there's another Ohm pack, the circuit, which looked pretty good. That ULA pack, which was the circuit, which looked pretty good. Um, and they're, they're lightweight, they're very strong, and they're all good, so I like those. Now, there is one feature of a backpack which always bugs me, and that's the ventilation at the back. No matter what grooves they put, what padding they put, what kind of arrangement they got, none of them work. Um, you sweat on your back, there's no airflow, so the sweat just stays there against your back and the backpack, none of them really work. Not for me anyway, maybe they work for you. Uh, so on hot days, you need airflow. Now there is another type of backpack, um, Osprey make one, and where there's a physical layer, a physical gap between a mesh, which goes against your back, and the backpack itself. The backpack ends up being curved and you get a gap through the middle. Now I quite like that. I didn't like their backpacks. Uh, Osprey make amazing backpacks, but it wasn't light enough for what I wanted. Um, but I do like that back, so I was looking for another one of those. And I came across, in the end, I decided to go for a Z-Pax backpack. Now, Z-Pax a, were a small cottage industry in the States, making um, quilts, ultralight Cuban fiber gear. They're one of the biggest uh, users of Cuban fiber in the world for backpacking. Um, and they've grown, grown, grown. Now, they're probably one of the biggest cottage industries and probably a full blown company now um, to be honest but they make amazing gear if you don't haven't looked at z-packs go and have a look it's just incredible prices are high yes uh, but it is good value and it is top of the range no compromise kind of kit so i've gone for um, 
a Z-Pax uh, backpack, you have to very s specifically specialize what you want. So you, there's lots of different size ranges, belt ranges, you can add on pockets, you can add on bits of kit, different strap arrangements. So you have to kind of know what you want. But if you know what you want, these packs are amazing. So I ordered it in December. It's arrived now late January. They make them all to order um, for your specification. So I'll just show you it and so you can have a look. Okay, so here is the backpack. It's the uh, Z-Pax Arc Hall, A-R-C Hall. They do several models. There's um, a Z-Pax Arc Blast. Most people know the Arc Blast. It's a very uh, iconic backpack made with Cuban fiber, uh, probably the lightest one in their range. Uh, it's exactly the same design as this, but Cuban fiber. They make the Arc Hall, which is this one, same design as the Blast, but this is Dyna Dyneema Gridstock fabric. So this is higher abrasion resistance compared to the Cuban fiber. Um, not as waterproof, but still fairly waterproof. Um, but I think it will last longer and the weight penalty is not very much, it's some grams, but maybe 100 grams, something like that. So this is the, um, the back system. I'm gonna show you a few features on it now. You can see what it's all about. Uh, the back system, they've got an external carbon fibre, specially designed frame. It's got two bars at the top, flat carbon fibre bars on the top and bottom, where all the attachments are. And what you do, I don't know if I can do it on my lap, it's got special kind of, well, it's got the micro uh, tie egg things at the top and bottom. And you flex it, I'll do it on my lap. You flex it. Then you do the tie outs. You wouldn't be adjusting this, you'd adjust it once and that's it. There you go. There you go. And you do that on both sides and you end up with an air gap at the back, which is exactly what I wanted. So as well. There you go. There you go, see? Nice air gap. So this is against your back. You've got an air gap and then you've got your um, your pad. So no problem with uh, back uh, heat and stuff like that. It's got lovely shoulder straps, uh, really well padded, all of the attachments. I'm gonna put some cord on here to attach a water bottle on the front, maybe a little pocket. Uh, here, it's got a really nice feature. Very difficult, there you go. See that? So the, the top of the straps, you can adjust up and down. So the height of the shoulder can be adjusted about five inches compared to your belt. So you can dial this in exactly to how you want it and to, to fit, uh, which is really good. It's got load lifters on the top to pull the top of the back into the shoulder. Um, on the hip belt, everything's removable. So every single strap and feature and buckle and everything, you can remove it yourself uh, very easily. Um, the belt's removable. I've added an extra lumbar support. There you go. So you can see this bit here is the extra pad that fits on just from here to here. And that, uh, that gives you a lot more comfort at the bottom of your back. It's very lightweight. Again, removable as well. It's got the hip pocket, so which are waterproofish, pretty waterproof, waterproof zips, tape seams throughout. Cuban fibre inside on the back for, for strength. Um, and then the best bit is this. So this is the uh, hip belt and it's got buckles top and bottom like a V to a single buckle in the middle. So that means you can adjust the top and bottom separately and the hip belt, you can adjust the angle of the hip belt and pressure so it moulds onto your hips. So all the weight goes down through the pack, through the frame, through the belt and onto your hips, which is the most comfortable way to, to take a backpack. So that is quite, well, it's very innovative and it, it just works perfectly. Um, good size, size pockets. You could easily get your, um, well, obviously water bottle in there, but you could get a cook kit in there, no problem. One on each side. At the bottom, it's got a couple of straps. 
Um, so you can put a roll or something in the front there. On the very bottom, I've used some of the tie outs they've already got and put on uh, some bungee cords so I can hang something off the bottom of the pack if I want. And what I've done is two millimeter bungee cords then it goes through a pig nosed uh, stopper like that. And that gives enough friction to hold it under a heavy load or high tension. So you can just slacken it off and tighten it up and then you don't need to double knot it, safety knot it, it will hold real tight with that friction. So it's a good lightweight way of doing that. Um, what else have we got? The top is a roll top, like a dry bag. It's got a little clip, rolls up, and then in the top, just put it apart. Uh, it's got, this is not Velcro, this is something else. I don't know what it is, but it's amazing. It's not as fluffy as Velcro, it's more like a felt than a fluff. And um, so it doesn't catch in stuff like Velcro does. And the adhesion is very good, but not as strong as Velcro, so it's easier to pull apart. And I really like it. I'm going to try and source this, find out what it is and get some, because I think it's amazing. It's definitely more robust than, um, than Velcro, so I like it a lot. And inside it's just a massive cavity. Uh, with Cuban fibre on your back. It's got a hole in here which comes out through some little flaps left or right for um, your bladder. If you, if you like using a bladder, I don't, but um, they do. Something to do. And then on top, it's got two straps that go over the top of the bag. It comes with one. I took an option to have two because I like the stability on the top. But the good thing is they left the buckles for the single strap on there. So um, what I can do is down here, you've got a big mesh front wet pocket, putting wet gear in to dry out, and it's got the mid buckle for the mid strap still there, already put on. So what I'm gonna do is, because I don't want this flopping, or I might wanna put a bit of tension on the front, I'm gonna put um, a male bit of this buckle on some grow grain ribbon and sew it to the middle of this mesh bag here with an adjustment. So I can adjust it in and out and just pop it on and it'll give me some support in the middle. So I'm definitely gonna do that. On the side, it's got compression straps on a very, very thick, strong uh, cord. Well, very thin, strong cord, uh, super lightweight. Um, yeah, and that's it really. It's about, I think it's a 60 litre bag. I'm not completely sure. Uh, but it's more than enough for what I want. What we do is we just do this up, we'll roll it down, and you uh, click it up, and that's it done. Uh, put the straps over the top, obviously, and tie it down. I've added a few, um, I don't like straps flapping around, so I've added a few. Tiny bits of two mil bungee and just tie the knot on the back, special knot, and that'll just put it in and hold it, stop all the straps flapping about, but you can still adjust it. Um, what else have I done to it? Not much else, that's about it really. Uh, but yeah, a phenomenal pack, 763 grams, um, and it's, uh, it's just just awesome pack. I've seen a lot of people use the Arc Blast version of this. There's a lot on YouTube and they really love it for very long heights. So I've got no problem with the design at all. It seems to fit me very well uh, with all the adjustments. Uh, it's got a sternum strap obviously. Uh, so I think I'm just going to uh, give it a go on the next uh, outing I go on. But I think for me now, saving all that weight just on your pack rather than your gear is a good value for money. Uh, you can spend hundreds and hundreds on an ultra lightweight sleeping bag or a quilt and you may save maybe a hundred grams or something but I'm saving uh, at least a kilo uh, on that maybe more um, so for pound for pound the pack weight uh, investment is a really good one if you're looking to saving weight it's not the lightest pack in the world it's one of the lightest there is lighter especially unframed packs are lighter but for me the ruggedness and the uh, all the features it has and the design is fantastic. So yeah, I'll be going with that. Check out Z packs if you're interested in these kind of packs and uh, I'll let you know how it goes on the next uh, outing. 
So I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the arc core. First impressions, first look. Uh, the quality of stitching is phenomenal. It is absolutely uh, spot on. Um, you, you couldn't make a pack yourself that quality without making about four or five at least uh, to get to that level, I think. And you can see all the research design and feedback that's gone into the, that pack to, uh, to ensure that it's just what people want. So, yeah, very interested to use that. Save a bit more weight when I'm out in the bag, which can be a bad thing. And then we'll see where all that goes. So, thanks very much for watching. It's only a quick vid, quick first look. When I'm out, I'll do some more detailed video on the pack itself, how it's uh, feeling and stuff, and how it's taking the weight. Um, this one in particular takes a lot higher base weight than some of the other ultra lightweight packs. That's another reason why I chose it. Um, so if I do want to load up for winter, then I can no problem and use the same pack uh, all year round. So there you go. Z Packs Arc Hall uh, Dyneema Gridstock Backpack. Super lightweight. I'll let you know how it goes. Cheers. Bye.